If you're reading along with us through the daily walk schedule, right now we hit the book of Isaiah. And in fact, this week we're going to be reading through the second half of that book. It's a big book. It's called one of the major prophets, which doesn't mean it's more important than the others. It just means it's longer. It's 66 chapters. Some have said um, it's like a mini Bible. Uh, you know, there's 66 books in the Bible, and the Old Testament books look ahead to Christ, and the New Testament books kind of look back uh, to Christ and also ahead to a second coming. And that's kind of the structure of the book of Isaiah. It was written to the southern kingdom of Judah. Uh, Israel had split between the north and the south like a civil war, Israel and Judah. And Israel was taken off by the Assyrians. Judah lasted longer. And there were prophets warning the people of Judah that you need to get your life in order. You need to come back and take your relationship with God seriously. Why do you think you're exempt from his judgment? Oh, come on. Surely God grades on the curve. We may not be perfect, but we're so much better than our neighbors to the north. What a warning. What a warning to a country like ours that tends to make a living out of comparing ourselves to other countries. The warnings of God in this book, I think especially to Americans, but to any culture, are absolutely as relevant as they were back when Isaiah first gave them. You know, the first half of the book, it, it talks about the coming uh, exile by the Babylonians and, and the people are taken away in captivity and it's a really, really, really dark time. But then we get to the second half of the book and there's a message of encouragement here. What an what a encouraging word that God always finishes what he starts, that he doesn't look at us and go, I made a bad investment in Phil, I think I'll cut my losses and go elsewhere. God finishes what he starts. He sticks with us. And he did that with the people of Judah. And the second half of the book promises their return, their restoration. And there's, there's one passage that I just want you to look at because the tendency as you read this book is to so much try to analyze it, like you're doing an autopsy on it. It's a collection of messages. It's by Isaiah, possibly some other writers in here, but they're all speaking for God and they're trying to get truth into our lives. And in this second half, there's a gem in here. In Isaiah 43, starting in verse 18, it says this, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, or your translation may say desert. A few years ago, our ministry, Walk Through the Bible, was going through a really difficult time, struggling financially, lots of questions about the future. Um, I'd been president for a while. I couldn't figure out how to crack the code on it, and yet we just had this sense that God was not finished with our ministry yet, and people were responding to our ministry here and in you know, over 100 countries around the world. But what's God doing? And our, our art director, Travis Stoneback, known to be a person of images more than a person of words, he, he gave me this. And I know you can't read this, but here's our little Walking Man logo. You see it on voices and other things. And it's a little faint here, but Walking Man is being held in the palm of a hand. And it's God's hand. And he has this verse, he says, from Isaiah 43, 19, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I love that verse. I love this. This still has a treasured place in my office. And I think the message of Isaiah, not just to our ministry, because God has restored us and, and we're enjoying a season now of real financial health and, and much greater impact um, we're just still waiting on the final figures at the end of this month, but we believe God has allowed us to minister to twice as many people now as just three years ago. Only God can do that. But to you, the promise is the same. It's when it's the darkest that dawn is about to come. It's when a relationship ends in heartbreak that, that just don't be surprised 
if God either brings restoration there or he leads you into another relationship that just makes you think, I, I never really even knew what love is. A setback career-wise, maybe even a termination. What do you know? God opens a new door that's not just a job, not just a career. It's a vocation. It's a calling. I've seen it over and over and over in my life. Sometimes when Ellen and I have just hit the wall in our relationship, 42 years we've been at this now, it's sometimes in the humility and the, and the repentance of that of saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've been putting myself so far ahead of you that there's a new breakthrough and it leads into a new sweet season of even greater intimacy. The book of Isaiah, sure it's a book about the history of Judah, but it's a book about today and it's a book about our world and our country, but it's a book about your life and my life. So as you read it this week, look for those gems in there and don't read past 43, 18, and 19 because I believe God really is doing something new in your life and mine and it's easy to miss it, but it's springing forth and I'd love to hear what you discover, not just in the scriptures, but as you reflect on your own experience. We'll see you again soon on another Walkthrough Voices.